This is Barry Belosis, one of the musculoskeletal radiology fellows at Stanford University. 16-year-old female soccer player presents with bilateral exertional lower leg pain, concern for chronic exertional compartment syndrome. Chronic exertional compartment syndrome could be evaluated by measuring the pressure of the compartment of the calves. If there is contraindication, MRI calf without contrast is usually done to evaluate for other possible mimics, such as medial tibial stress syndrome or stress fracture, any tendinopathy of the calf, deep vein thrombosis, or possible popliteal artery entrapment syndrome. This is in a different patient who had MRI calf without contrast on a runner with anterior tibial pain. We use the Fredrickson classification when evaluating for medial tibial stress syndrome. Fredrickson classification is graded 0 to 4, and it evaluates for periosteal edema, marrow edema, any intracortical signal changes, or any presence of linear region of intracortical signal change. So for this patient, we can see this periosteal edema as characterized by this T2 hyperintensity, also some intracortical signal change, and some bone marrow edema. The patient does not have any signal abnormality of the calf muscles, arguing against the presence of exertional compartment syndrome in this specific patient. Exertional compartment syndrome would typically present with muscle hyperintensity on our fat suppressed imaging with or without muscular swelling, and it would typically involve one or more compartment. It can also occur simultaneously with the presence of medial tibial stress syndrome. This is on a different patient who presented with medial tibial pain. Here on our patient, we can see this periosteal edema as characterized by this increased signal and increased intracortical signal changes. No appreciable bone marrow edema on this patient. On our T1, we do not see any signal abnormality in the marrow. When evaluating for the stress fracture or medial tibial stress syndrome, we just want to make sure that the signal abnormality along the cortex is not a vessel and we determine that by following it and scrolling through the images and make sure that it's not a vessel running around the area. We evaluate for any muscle signal abnormality such as atrophy or fatty infiltration, but we do not see that on this patient.